we got somebody ready for the listing. So, uh, and we know the input date already. So as you see, you will have the property address, like one, two, three, Main Street, whatever city, town, and uh, state, and uh, zip code, you go there. Agent name is going to be your name and the input date you have already. And then you have the uh, listing agent rain ID. That's yours. Uh, office ID is always 9274. So make a note of that. And, uh, and then you have got to have your phone number, the office phone number, the office fax. And then if there is another agent with you, then a mentor or what, I, I don't know how that is for you, but you have the second agent's uh, rain ID and their name and their phone number as well. And then um, it says, uh, you know, leave blank if you want your rain email. It's always better for uh, Carla or whoever is inputting the uh, you know, data to have your uh, email up there also. You know, fill in everything. And then comes the selling broker fee. That is, uh, you know, what you are, will be paying the other broker. So, you know, standard is 6%, three and three. But for some reason, if it's any different, you're paying out anything less, then that needs to be, uh, you know, uh, put in there whatever you'll be paying them. Paying them, not not yours, but, yeah, because this is displayed. And then is uh, everything that's with an asterisk has to be filled out. If there are you, you know, you cannot leave it blank or not available or not sure. And then there is specific commission. It's always no. What that means is that we'll just be paying if uh, something happens or like if I get so much money, I'll pay you. Or if you bring, no, it's uh, it's it's always no. And lockbox type, uh, lock, lock box type. Uh, we always use the rain lockbox. So you check that. And for any other reason, uh, you know, there is you're using a contractor box or the one with the code. You can, you know, you can put other. I don't know if you do business, uh, you know, Williamsburg or any other area. So, but if anyone that does business in those areas, then you need to put the, that type of lockbox, whatever's going to be there. Some listings have the rain as well as the Williamsburg. So you can check both. So that uh, notifies the agents that, uh, you know, that you can access uh, either or. And the next one is vacant, yes or no. Uh, back in the day or like a few years ago, that was a compulsory uh, thing. Now it's not. But it's uh, that's like a double-edged sword with you know with so many uh, you know people up to mischief these days. If you click vacant, yes, uh, you know they're notified the home's empty, and you know they can be up to uh, mischief and stuff like that. But uh, you know it 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 is also a good thing, whereas in it tells the other agent it's flexible. Uh, you know if they are in the area and they want to see it, or they were seeing any other house and the buyer didn't like it. He says, while I'm here, I might as well look at this. They know if it's vacant, yes, it's an easy access. They need to reach out to you and get that uh, set up. Showing instructions, uh, if you have any specific showing instructions, sometimes they need two hours notice, or uh, you know, please take shoes off, or uh, you know, if you have it being set up uh, through a third party, uh, like uh, showing time or something, then call showing time or call home snap to schedule. You would you would put that there. Agent remarks, uh, if you have a CBS, which is always a good thing because that helps you keep track of uh, who's coming and going and whether they showed up after taking an appointment or not. You can put the details there in agent remarks or even in showing instructions for CBS uh, code C agent remarks. And in their agent remarks, you can put details, call, text, uh, you know, your name and phone number, you know, for, uh, or if you need a prior notice, sometimes there are tenants, they are not very cooperative. You may need 24 hour notice, 48 hour notice, or no showings like before two o'clock in the afternoon, whatever the conditions are, it's always good to have it put out there. So you're not getting calls with stuff that you know it cannot be completed. And then comes, do you have any questions so far? Location, street number, that's your street address. Uh, you know, directions, if it's south, north, west, you just put the W or the, you know, pre uh, prefix. Street name, got to have the street name. So just the street name. If it's, uh, you know, uh, Main Street, you would just put street name Main. And in the street type, you would put street 
street type is lane, avenue, circle, you know, all that different stuff. So in the street name, you're not going to do main street and then in street type with street again. All right. And then you got the direction. And uh, unit number. So if, if it's a unit, you would, uh, you know, you would put a unit number there. Like if it's a condo or something or uh, unit A, unit B, you would do that. In the state, Virginia area, you know, you can pull that up through the MLS or the listings and see what uh, what area they are in, you know, the home. Like area 43, and uh, Northeast Central Virginia or, you know, what it is. And then you got the county city, Virginia Beach. Uh, most of us is all city here. So there's an asterisk. There's no there's no counties in our area unless you go towards Williamsburg or you go out or maybe other states. But uh, that will be Virginia Beach or Chesapeake, Suffolk. And then the city will be the same zip code. And if you can get the plus four digit zip code, fantastic. If not, many times Google has it or some other maps will give that to you. But that's not needed. But the zip code is. And then you got the property identification number that comes up in the uh, tax records. And then the subdivision name as well. And uh, and the neighborhood name. You can do research and stuff and find out what, what neighborhood that falls in. Legal description is in the tax records. And then there is one another uh, uh, in a site that uh, gives you all this legal description you know, the uh, tax identification number, the uh, high schools and stuff as well. Let me uh, pull that up. That is, that is the city of Virginia Beach site. That is uh, propertysearch.virginiabeach.gov. Let me see if I can bring this up. I can show you here. Let me get the real screen of the ad for I want to open another one. There should be an option. You can see them right. All right, there's a uh, property search. Right. So if you want to find out a property or you want to find out a home that's going to be coming up, do you have any address you want me to put in there?
Mm-hmm. Make have a soup. Enjoy. A lot of people will use uh, someone else's listing or something, you know, to find stuff. But this is this is much, uh, you know, better and gives you a better information. So as you can see, it pulls the property up for you, gives you the view. It's got the parcel ID. You see that? All right. It's got the assessments and everything. And it's got the mailing address. It's got the uh, legal description. That's your tax ID, uh, your uh, legal. It's got the district, neighborhood, Woods at London Bridge. Uh, it's a residential. It's got the zoning too. Uh, it's got the building information. It's got your accurate square footage and everything, what's recorded in the city, the same stuff. A lot of it appears in the uh, tax records, but it also gives you the kind of heating, cooling, everything it's got. The number of bedrooms, bathrooms. If there is any discrepancy, like you go to the house and there are four bedrooms and you have three listed here, question them, did they add the bedroom? How did it get three, four, and this was three? And then if they tell you, oh yeah, we did some work, you know, find out if permits were full because that can get questioned, uh, you know, when you're listing the house by a new buyer. Because anybody can see the data that there are three bedrooms or there were three when they bought it. Now they are four. How did that increase? The even tells you there is a small utility shed in the back. You're built, size of the house. It's got a fireplace. It's got a wood deck. And this was all the previous sale. So that, I mean, that's got nothing to do with the listing, but gives you uh, some insight. It's got the taxes there for the years. City services, in case you got a buyer for an area, you can use the same site, not just for listing for your buyer to what is the police precinct, where it is, and the address for it, voting district, and even gives you trash pickups. Many times if you're representing a buyer, you know, you're not sure what day, you could ask the agent, agent says, I'm not sure, I don't know what day, this tells you what day the trash pickup is. And it even gives you, yeah. And it even gives you the recycling. So if you get a new buyer moving in, do I have recycled this week? You know, you don't tell them, look, if your neighbor's got a blue can out or not, you can surely give him that information that makes you as an agent look much better than, you know, having to tell him, let me find out or look at your neighbors. You got the schools over here. Again, there could be an error by some other agent. They could put a wrong school. This Sometimes and that continues down you know most people do look at the previous listing makes it easy mm -hmm. thinking that that other agent's done their homework 100 percent, but they always can be an error by anybody so you got the schools here as well and this is also great. It's not like a realtor website. It's for the public. So even if you got a buyer, you can share the link with them and tell them, hey, this will give you all the information, you know, uh, about, uh, you know, the neighborhood, the precinct, you know, the schools, and you can even go to the school website from here. So it's it's got a lot of uh, good information. That was that was page one. And in the property information, you know if it's attached or detached. There's no questions on that. If it's a condo, it's attached. And uh, I mean, sorry, did, uh, yeah, it is. It is attached if it's a condo. And if it's a separate single family, you would you would check detached list price. You have that information already. What it's going to be list date. You know what it 
what, what the start is. Expiration date, usually 90 days is what you want to get minimum, even though we are in a great market, but uh, it all depends on how you're having the house price. You know, if it's overpriced or, you know, if the seller thinks my home's a lot worth a lot more and you still choose to take that listing, at that point, you know, you may want to get more than 90 days if possible. I I like to throw in four months even in this market. That's 120 days. And let's say, say something, you know, usually they'll say, oh, why four months? Then you can do it three months. Sometimes you don't want to do it just for a month yeah. in case. But a lot of times they'll do that. But we just put standard things. And sometimes in this market, if you are really competing for a le uh, listing, there are issues and they may want to list it only for 30 days. It's not preferred, but I think you may want to talk to your mentor or your broker at, at, at Thomasina at the point and, you know, explain the situation to them. This is what's going on and get their approval if you're going to get a 30 day listing. All right. If the price, everything is correct. You know, still, it's a good chance you can get it under contract. And if it's under contract, you don't have to worry because it's not going anywhere. And then you just extend the, you know, once it's under contract, you don't have to worry about the expiration date. But you can always extend that easily with a um, with a listing change form, All right? Now, listing type, if it's a, 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 what we call a standard listing that we do, uh, ex exclusive agent, standard agency, uh, exclusive right that's what we prefer because you're the only one selling the house so it's always standard agent CER All right and ownership it's uh, simple if it's a condo you're going to write condo we don't do timeshares or if it's a co-op and then you would you would check the type uh, of listing this is residential class so if it's business that would be business if the building is used for uh, business or if you're selling a building that's like a daycare or something, uh, that would be business zone. Zoning, it's there in the website we just saw or in the tax uh, records also. And square feet, living area, you have it in the tax records. If there's a discrepancy, the owner says it's 2,000 square feet and the tax records show it's uh, 1985, you know, you can tell them it's that's easy understanding to come to, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, if the owner says it's 2,000, tax records show it's 1,600, that's a big discrepancy. Then you could ask them, how is it different? Okay. Oh, we, or we converted the garage or we added... Uh, you know, we uh, added extra room, like we did an extension, or we converted part of the attic. Then you got to make sure that that is mentioned there. Okay. Not mentioned there really, but you got to find out why, what the difference is. Not just oh, okay, whatever. Let me put it because uh, they may be wrong. It uh, it it may be sixteen hundred, and uh, you know when the appraiser comes out, uh, you're going to price it with being two thousand. What they tell you. But uh, if it's actual 1600, you're going to have a problem because the appraiser is going to measure it and he's going to value it for 1600 and not for 2000. And you are under contract with value as for 2000. So there will be a price issue. Buyer may not want to buy the house because now it's uh, smaller than advertised. Number of bedrooms, all that's got to be filled. Full baths, got to be filled, whatever the number is. If there is no half bath, don't leave it blank. You got to put zero. Number of stories, even if it's one story, you put one, two, three, whatever it is. Fireplace, most homes do have fireplaces, but if there isn't anything that's with an asterisk, you got to put zero because it's required. And even if there's no fireplace, you don't put no NA, you got to put zero, right? Garage square feet, if you got it, yours looks good to you, or if you can measure to verify, it's always better. Otherwise, just leave it blank, doesn't have an asterisk. Your built tax records is there, as well as in the city assessor's uh, website, the one we just looked at with the schools and everything. New construction, is it a new construction or no? Master model, if it's a, like if uh, when it was being sold, was it a master model at that time? Some some subdivisions, uh, you know, sell the master, master model at the end of the, of the construction period. So if this was, 
then it may have a lot of uh, upgrades and features, but, and those features may be a uh, um, good thing to list at that time, like if it had crown molding, extra features, because it's a model, they do enhance it to, uh, you know, give a visual to buyers what can be, uh, you know, purchased by them at an extra cost in their home that they are building. Uh, if it was a model or if it is or if it is uh, currently a model in a new subdivision, you can write the model name as well. First floor bedroom or not. So, uh, you know, that is either it could have a primary bedroom or it could just have a guest bedroom. If there is, you uh, check the number of those. Not the number, but uh, yes or no. All right. And uh, bedrooms with and suite, that's bedrooms with uh, bathrooms. So uh, if you got more than one, you will you will list that. If there isn't any, some homes, there are two or three bedrooms with a hallway bath and uh, one or two hallway baths. That point, you put zero. You got the owner's name. You got to make sure it uh, you know, matches the tax records and uh, what they're telling you because that will be written on the contract by the buyer's uh, company. And uh, if it's an LLC, if it's in trust or something, you know, you got to show the documents, verify it with Jones Walker and Lake or the attorney you're using or the closing company to make sure that it's all in place. If there is more than one owner, husband, wife on the, sometimes they don't remember, they, they'll tell you, oh, it's on both our names. But if it is uh, on tax records, it's just one person's name. You can, uh, you know, verify with them. Hey, the tax record shows one person's name. Sometimes they go change it before selling and, and they have two names out there, but it's not updated in the tax records to rain or the city records. Ask them to show you a tax bill if possible, if they got two names on that. You don't have to put the owner's phone number. Don't do that because then if the listing is expiring or something, you don't want people calling them directly. Approximate uh, lot frontage, that's the lot dimensions. If you will uh, go to the maps or realist, you should be able to pull that up. Like if you're in a listing, previous listing, or you uh, go in the tax record, it gives you the dimensions of the lot. Again, you don't have to uh, add that if it's not a lot or if it's uh, something standard, you don't have to. If it's something exceptional, you definitely want to advertise that but you can add it or not, choice is yours. Approximate acres, that's in the tax records. Lot dimensions, again, you know, it's the frontage and the depth, or if it's different dimensions, sometimes the front is a lot wider than the back. So you can you can write that here. Like if, if it's a triangle shape or if it's like coning in in the back, you or if it's narrow in the front and it, and it widens towards the back. You can you can put that here. If there's a condo association, you need the a legal name, and uh, like for example, uh, that would be uh, you know you gotta you gotta find out from them like get a receipt or something. If they are in a uh, Lake Smith Condos, uh, you cannot just be like Lake Smith Condos. You gotta find out what is the name legal name of the association. And the condo association management, you can look that up, you can find out, or you can also get the uh, name from the sellers, from the uh, from their uh, receipts and stuff. Or if they have received uh, communication letters from the condo association, that has all the information. And the management company can be different from the, uh, like if it's Lake Smith Condominiums, the management company may not be Lake Smith Condominiums maybe UPA, United Property Association, or could be any other uh, company. So you need to put that there and the contact information, phone number for the company, and the, you've got to have that there, all right? And if there is an HOA or POA, same thing. you got to have the uh, association legal name, what it's called, and it's not going to be like Lake Smith Homeowners Association. Sometimes they have a different name to it. you got to find that out and even the contact information. And many a times uh, the homeowners uh, management as well, like it could be a condo plus a homeowners association, all right? And, and many times those two are managed by two different companies. Sometimes they're managed by the same, so do not assume 
that if the condo company is uh, UPA, the homeowners is also UPA. Always ask them for paperwork, do some research. If they tell you, you know, I think it's this, call the company up and, you know, uh, make sure that they are the ones managing that, uh, that association. And while if you get somebody there or, you know, you can Google the phone number, email, send them a request and ask them for the person's name, phone number, as well as email and information uh, that manages that condo or the HOA, because that will help you with ordering the uh, docs and stuff like that. Or if the listing agent has any questions, like sometimes if it's a condo or a POA, they want to know about the rental clauses and stuff like that. You can share that. And if you have some information, you can say, this is what I was told, but here is the condo association. Do your due diligence. We are in a buyer due diligence state. So if somebody wants to buy to rent, today the laws allow them to rent. After they buy in two months, they may change. So you don't want that to come back to bite you. If it changes, they say, hey, we, you know, we bought this as an investment and you email me, it can be rented and it's now it cannot. Then, you know, that's, that's a problem on your plate. And, uh, you know, sure, they're doing a lot of Virginia Beach stuff like that. Most, most of the times it's city, water is city. And, uh, but if you're doing it, outskirts, Pungo, Chesapeake, other areas, Indian River Road, stuff like that. You got to find out if it's septic and or, uh, you know, what what type of uh, sewer and water. They do even have well water. So you, you, you got to find that out as well. And many condo associations and stuff, the water is uh, provided by them. It comes from the city, but uh, they, they build you. Like if it's a condo, sometimes water is included. And uh, so it's city water, but then it's private because you're not paying the, your water bill to the city. It's included in the condo. So that becomes uh, private. Water heater, when you're doing your listing, uh, when you're there at the house doing, you know, filling out all this data entry form, it's a good thing to take this form with you. And uh, so, and make notes. You don't need to ask every question, but, uh, you know, water heater, if you see it, it's always good to recognize the different types of water heater. And that comes with experience, asking questions and paying attention. If it's electric, you can see it. It's going to have a wire. If it's gas, you're going to see it's going to have a, a chute going out. You're going to see the gas connections at the bottom. It looks different. So uh, if you're not sure, always ask. No harm done. All right. Sometimes the water heaters in the attic, you can't see it. You cannot get up. Then definitely ask them that question. What type of water heater is it? If it's a, a condo, some condos are in a two-story, three-story uh, unit, like in a two or three-story building, even those one level, one living level. So condo level, you will put there one, two, three, whatever floor the condo is on, all right? And if it's one living level, you will put one, living level one, but condo level three, because the condo is on, you got to climb up three stories to get there. If it has an elevator, you definitely want to advertise that in agent remarks and in public remarks. Because if someone is not comfortable climbing up the three stories, but don't mind living in a condo on the third floor, at least they know there's an elevator. Disclosures. So if the, you know all these different disclosures are there, and so if it is, uh, you know, uh, you, I mean, we have to check uh, depot. And if it is in a, uh, if it's in a condo community, you will check or a POA, HOA, res resale certificate required, all right? And uh, if, uh, if the owner is an agent, yeah, you know, you will check owner agent. And, uh, you know, so look through all of these. And if it's a contract owner, we don't do contract ownership. But if, if, if someone is a contract owner, if it's a bank, re uh, you know, repossessed property, if it's a short sale, you know, that all needs to be uh, checked depending on what type of sale it is. If it's a court approval, if it's a government owned home, if it's in a historic district, you need an occupational permit. Uh, if it's a 55 plus community, there are certain restrictions. It falls in here. You got to uh, check that. If it's a co-op, it would be a board approval needed. You would, you would check that over there.
teachers, you know, so while you're there, make notes, you know, you, uh, take this with you. You have to get familiar with this form because that time with your client, it doesn't look very professional. If you're going to sit and look at each thing and be like, where is the bedroom? Where is the fireplace? It kind of tells you other rooms, what this means. They're talking about all the rooms, styles of rooms. So if there's a first floor bedroom, you would check that. If the first floor primary bedroom, you would check that. If it's both, you would check both. If they got assigned storage, like if you're in a condo, you got a storage unit down, that's an assigned storage, you would you would click that. And if, the, uh, uh, if there's an attic, balcony, breakfast area, if they have converted the garage into living space, you know, you would you would do that. Uh, finish room over garage, frog, many rooms have, uh, many homes have that. And, you know, what whatever other features are there, loft, primary bedroom with bath, you know, if most homes have that. Look through everything, you would check that. If it has a pantry, it's got a porch. If they got an office study area, you know, many times a landing, they got a, a foyer on top. You can check that as an office study and a foyer. And uh, if they got an unfinished room over garage, what that means, some homes just have like an attic space over the garage with the floor, but it can be finished. It's not heated, cooled, or it's not uh, ready for use, but that's an option. So definitely check that. That gives a buyer vision. If I complete that, I can add more square footage to the house. And if it's got a utility room or a closet, room is like a laundry room that you can walk in. It's, uh, you know, there is space. There's a door you can open and close, stand in there. And a closet would be by folds or a door where it's just a laundry closet. There's no room to walk in there and store other things. And if it's got a workshop, you would you would click that. And if there's got a pool or not, simple question. Parking, what type of garage? If it has a garage, how many cars? If it's an attached garage or if it's a detached garage. So simple. And if it, like you walk to the house straight up, it's part of the house structure, it's attached. If it's separate from the house, it's in the back, on the side, it's detached, number of cars. If you've got driveway space, uh, you know, if it's a condo, you got to put like how many spaces come with the uh, condo reserve spaces, like one space, two space. So you check the number of that and then assign reserve. You would click that. And, uh, and uh, or if there's street parking, if there's covered parking, uh, Norfolk has some condos that have covered parking and you would check covered, you know, a uh, garage or you would uh, parking garages. Then it's the buyer's responsibility to park their car. There is not too much over here for us, but uh, downtown Virginia Beach, uh, what's this, the uh, Western Hotel, Western Condos, they have that uh, in a garage facility. And if it's off street, driveway space, whatever uh, applies there. And interior features, again, you have to know the different styles, Google it and find out before you go for a listing, what is the cathedral ceiling, all that stuff, that a good description feature to have even uh, when you're describing the house. And uh, what type of, uh, you know, if you've got bathrooms that have access from the bedroom hallway, if it's got access from two bedrooms, so you, they have those options here as well. Again, features, if it's got cedar closet, there is a bar, uh, fireplace, if it's electric, gas, you know, you can look there and if it's gas, but there's gas natural or there's a propane tank, it's good things to find out from the uh, homeowner. If it doesn't work, home sale, homeowner says, you know, I've got a gas fireplace, never used it, doesn't work. You would put fireplace decorated. So it's there, but, you know, it, it doesn't work. Then it's up to the buyer to go fix it or do whatever they need to do. And uh, if, if it's handicap accessible, uh, primary bedroom fireplace you would you know you would check all that if it's got double sink in the bathrooms two sinks you would check that and uh, if it's got permanent attic stairs that means you open the door and it's got steps going up all right that's that's permanent attic stairs pull down they got a rope hanging or there's a hook and you pull it down using a uh, hook or a chain something to get it down and the steps fold down and you walk up the, uh, to the attic uh, if it's got a push-up attic, then there's no feature for that. But you would need a ladder. You would push the plank up and get in there. And then, um, you know, scuttle access is the storage space on the side. Uh, there'll be like a little door. Uh, and so you you got some storage space in the back over there. 
and uh, in the walk-in attic, walk-in closets, uh, window treatment, and uh, wood stove, if it's got a wood stove or not. Fence, all the different styles. You got chain link, you got wood, you got privacy, you know, picket, partial, partial as if it's not done all the way. And, uh, you know, you got split rail, wire, all the different stuff. So if it's fence, you got you you, you got backyard fence, and then you uh, then you uh, click the type of fence. If it's full, you know you got full, you got privacy. If it's partial, you would do partial, and uh, all and that simple. Again, heating, you got to know your different styles of uh, heating. So you find out what type of heating it's got. If it's electric, it's heat pump. Cooling is heat pump if it's electric, and if it's gas heat, you would do uh, you would do a natural gas for heat, and air conditioning can be uh, that would be central air. If they got the newer units that sixteen Sears and plus over, uh, you definitely want to click that sixteen plus CRAC because that's a more expensive and a very efficient way of cooling the house. And if they got window units, if they got variable speed, that's an air conditioning feature, you definitely wanna ask them questions and find out about that, you know? Appliances, you know, you gotta find out uh, for a loan to pass, you know, most of the time, you know, you, they, Got to have a stove, dishwasher. That's those two got to be there. Actually, dishwasher they they have to have a stove for the loan to go through. And uh, so you got to check with your uh, sellers if uh, refrigerator and uh, you know washer dryer are negotiable. Sometimes they want to take that. So if they want to take it, you got to make sure it's not checked over there. And if they are, if they want to leave it, you then you got to check the washer dryer. If they're going to take it, you do washer hookup, dryer hookup. And if they're going to take the refrigerator, you don't check that. If they're going to change the refrigerator, it's always better if they say, I'm going to leave the one in the garage. I'm going to take this one. Tell them, please, let's put this in the garage and get the one from the garage over here. And if there are newer appliances and stuff, you find out if the Energy Star, most new, new appliances are, you, you, you can check that as we fill up. If it's waterfront, then you describe the type of waterfront property it is, the deep water bay, where it is, if it's beach, deep water access, uh, all that kind of stuff, you know? And uh, if it's tidal, that means that you gotta wait for the tide to come in before you can take a boat out, that, that's what would be tidal. And if it's a river, you know, if it's just on the water, but you got riparian rights, what that means is uh, you don't have a dock or anything, but your property goes all the way into the water, it's not accessible. That's what repairing rights are. Even though you own it, but you cannot do anything with it. If it's got wet reserves and stuff like that on, on, on that. And we spoke about the cooling. Do you have any questions so far on any of these things? Exterior features. Again, we're talking about the outside of the house now. Whether it's a barn, corner unit, it's on a caldy sack. If it's got a deck, you can see all those things. Uh, if it has a gazebo, if it's on a golf course, you know, uh, if it's got a greenhouse, if horses are allowed, uh, if it's in a, if it's in a, a horse area, so they got a huge yards, barns, in-ground sprinklers, if it had that, uh, if it's the townhouse and stuff, they usually don't have it. If it's a single family, the grass looks really good. It may be a good question. If they got in-ground sprinklers, then they got a well pump. Usually they are in the garage or it could be in the crawl space. So it's a good thing to ask the seller. Uh, if you go in the garage, you see a sprinkler system on the wall, it'd be like a box. Find out uh, if you have a well pump, if it's working and all the features about that as well. Storage shed, uh, irrigation control, all right? View, you can tell, you know, if it's on the bay, beach, water, river, whatever the view is. If it's nothing, you don't have to click anything. If it's woods, you got trees in the back, you would click wood. But if you if you can see other neighbors and stuff, and you only got a couple of trees, that's not wood. 
condo amenities. If they are in a condo, you got to find out what are the amenities, landscaping, pool, you know, what are the different features. You can you definitely want to click that over there. If they got tennis courts, playground, all the features that they offer. Equipment, attic fan, you can see from far, but if you cannot ask them, do they have an attic fan? Uh, if not sure, leave it blank. It's better unsaid than, than claiming you got an attic fan and coming to find out it's not there. No, they always do. Uh, then if they got a generator, they'll tell you if they do cable hookup, ceiling fans. When you're walking in the house, every room has got ceiling fan. That's a good feature to describe. If uh, two rooms have it, just click it. But even if there's one ceiling fan, you click it. It doesn't have to be throughout the house. Uh, central vacuum is a great feature. Uh, if they got electric vehicle charger and the garage door opener, if they have a generator hookup, rewire for that. Hot tub, jetted tub is in the bathrooms. Hot tub is what's outside. Uh, the spa hot tub, jetted tub is in the bathroom with the jets. Many people confuse hot tub and that. Uh, intercom, if it does have it. Uh, you know, if there's got any uh, humidifier, anything in the AC, uh, mechanical fresh air, some different system, definitely. If they got a security system, you want to find out if that conveys or not. If they got a water softener. Exterior, if it's uh, if it's aluminum, if it's asbestos, asbestos has got like a, a feel to it. You know, if you see it's not regular vinyl, it's not brick, find out from them what it is or ask an experienced agent, take a picture and find out what type of exterior it is. Uh, brick, if it's log. Uh, our area, it's mainly you'll find vinyl, uh, either stucco or it could have some stone in the front uh you know you don't find too much uh wood exterior and stuff but there are some homes so that have wood also and if it's got uh you know these uh, hardy planks whatever it is we, they have these options over here roof most homes ash fall shingle roofs might always find out it could be slate you know if it's a uh older home some have a flat rubber roof as well so definitely find out what type of roof it's got you know and flooring when you're in the house you can see the different kind of floorings and don't confuse uh, uh they may tell you uh, this is uh, laminate or it's lvp you gotta make sure if it's 100 percent waterproof ask them for a sample uh, because all laminate is uh 100 laminate could be water resistant but it's not 100 waterproof LVP is 100% waterproof. So that's a different luxury vinyl plant. So ask them uh, ask them about that. And if they got carpet, they got tile, that, that would be ceramic. If they got concrete slab, then that's, uh, you know, concrete, uh, marble, parquet, slate, hardwood, whatever they got, ask them what kind of flooring they got. If it's the old fashioned vinyl, like a sheet, then that's vinyl. Style. So if it's a two unit condo apartment, what, what type of style uh, it is? If it's a ranch, split level, if it's a townhouse, you would click townhouse. And uh, if it is a manufactured house, like the assembled house, they come and they got assembled there, you would, you would do that. You would click that mobile home, you know. And uh, if it's a split level, uh, traditional, transitional, the different types of homes. If it is absolutely uh, like a twin home is if it's got uh, if it's attached by just the garage or if it's two homes that share a one wall, that would be a twin home, not a not a bunch of homes. You know, they look like single families, but they're only connected by a storage shed or by a wall or by a garage. That's uh, that's a twin home because it's two homes and then there is space and then there's again a set of two homes. A Victorian is an absolutely old-fashioned home. That, that would be a Victorian, all right? Unit description, one living level. So if it's a condo on the third floor, 
that's a one living level, level three, all right? And if it's got two living levels, homes, townhouses, most of them are two, some have three as well. So you would you would check that. If it's a, a, a campsite, you don't worry about that. Corner unit, detached single family. If it's single family, yes. End unit, yes. Uh, if it's a loft, like you're the modern homes, condos, they got their lofts, you would check that. Penthouse, yep. Studio, if, if, if it's that style of studio apartment. Miscellaneous, uh, if it's the needs work, it's a fixer upper, that's how you're advertising it, you would check that. Uh, fuel and tanks. So all the homes, they use the oil uh, for heating. So if there is fuel and tank left, that's what you would check. It. Even if they have uh, converted to electric or gas, but they still have a tank that's there and they got fuel in it, uh, find out, uh, you know, has that been emptied or not? Because you got to call a company, they come and remedy that and they, you know, extract the oil. They make sure there were no leaks. It hasn't seeped in the ground. They either take the tank out or they put sand and then they seal it. So all that does come with a cost and a, and a licensed professional has to take care of that. So your job is to find out if there's fuel, put it. If pet restrictions, your owner's got a big dog, stuff like that, you know, put it there. So the person going in is, uh, is aware and okay, there may be a big dog in the property, you know, so that's there. And uh, if it's all fixed up, that's a rehabilitated property. If they're giving a warranty plan, they're advertising, oh, I'm going to give a one-year warranty. My AC is 10 years old. I'm not fixing it. I'm, I'm happy to give a warranty plan. You will check that. And write that in remarks, you know, whatever warranty plan is going to convey. Sometimes owners have it and they, and they want to, you know, transfer that and pay for one year for the new buyer. You can write that owner is covered with the 210 home warranty and is uh, and will give a buyer one year from closing. Miscellaneous, I uh, we did that. Uh, sustainability, if it has advanced framing, concrete construction, most homes don't have that, but newer homes, if it's got recirculated hot water. So you would, you would check that. Foundation is pretty simple. You know, if it's a crawl, there's space to go underneath. It's on a slab. And if it's encapsulated, that's a feature. Whereas in a company goes in, puts the white uh, paper sheet and wraps up the pillars and everything, that's encapsulated. If they just put the plastic, that's not encapsulated. That's a moisture barrier. There is no check mark for that. If there's a basement, you would check that. Green certifications usually comes by builders. If they bought a new house and they have that, you may want to verify the certificate before you put your neck out there and check and check any of these. Accessibility, again, you know, if it's a handicap accessible, you would uh, put those features, you know, like low cabinet, low uh, uh, elevator. It's like if the elevator in the house, condo community, you would definitely check that. Lower countertops, low light switches. There are some communities, senior communities, they keep those in mind. So these are some of the features that you would uh, check. Like stepless entrance, you're just walking in, you know? Stepless showers, low pile carpet, so all that stuff. And hallways with 42 inch plus, that means wheelchair accessible, 42 inch wide hallways, larger door frames for wheelchairs to go through. Like grab bars and stuff like that. So if you have an older person that's been in the house and has need for those features, you're selling it with that, definitely a plus to mention. Rooms, number of rooms, that's there in your tax records as well. You just don't walk in there and call anything like, I think it's six bedrooms, I think it's eight bedrooms. So it's there in the tax records. And again, some of these, none of these are compulsory room dimensions and stuff. Uh, you know, if, you're, if your buyer has, if your seller has it, it's always good to verify because if they give it to you and you put it out there, come to measure it's different, that can come back to be a problem for you as well as your seller. Because the buyer says to me, I was told this room is a particular size and now it's smaller. Utility level, whether the utilities are on like your laundry and everything is on the first floor or the second floor, you can advertise that. Your public remarks describe all the features for the house in detail. You know, the, uh, the bedrooms or if whatever you see that stands out or whatever the client tells you they are renovated, 
and they got new AC, roof, windows. You know, uh, the area is close to dining, shopping, easy access to interstate. You cannot put stuff that are, it's a great, uh, it's near uh, church or, you know, walking distance to church because if someone's in a wheelchair, that is a fair housing violation. So you want to use like a couple blocks from church, short distance from church, near a church. So that kind of stuff. And photos, we always do listing agent office upload. So the, uh, you know, office gets all the data in the MLS and you will, uh, you know, up upload the pictures. So when you get them from your, from the photographer, it's always good to use a professional photographer for your listings because that makes you stand apart and it attracts buyers to your listing as well. And if you have a virtual tour, we got to put the non-branded. If you have it in, in advance, you uh, put the link there so Carla can upload it. But if it doesn't come in time and your listing is ready and submitted, you can always email the link to Carla with the property address so she knows what it, uh, what it ties into. And if you got a 3D uh, or you got aerial drone, like if you got a waterfront property, you got aerial pictures and stuff highlighting that, you would you would put all that input it over there. So when so Carla can put it in MLS, so potential buyers can click on that in the MLS and see the features. Seller finance, if it's an assumption or if it's a lease, we, we don't do lease, but lease to purchase, that's owner finance, you know, uh uh trade, whatever VHDA, you would you would click that. And then uh, required for condos, uh, like condos have restrictions. Some condos will not, uh, depending on their documents, they, they may allow all type of loans. Some may not allow FHA because FHA guidelines are stricter. The condo's condition may not meet those. So you got to find out from the condo community manager before you click it and entertain an offer that what type of uh, loans are uh, allowed by the community. And then if your seller has any contributions, willing to pay cozy closing costs, advertising it up front, uh, you know, uh, carpet allowance, condition allowance, you can you can add that there, you know. And you don't need to worry about mortgage payments, taxes, that's on the new buyers to find all that out. And we are not advertising the loan. It's not an assumption. We are not putting it out there as an assumption. So you don't need to fill any of this up. What's needed is the taxes uh, that is there in the tax records. That's the yearly taxes that would go in here, over here. And then you got the HOA fees. Uh, you know, if it's HOA, you would click yes, what the fees are. If it's a condo, you would click uh, what the uh, what the uh, fees are next. What the fees are. And uh, if it's re release of liability, just click no. And... Uh, Possession closing, always that's the safest and best route to take. And the subject of eligibility, no. You know, we, we're not like, oh, you got to be this kind of buyer. You can you can finance the property, you 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 can have it. We are not uh, discriminating. So subject of eligibility, no. Unless it's a senior community or something. So you got to be eligible to buy that. So that's that's what it would be. All right. And HOA, POA. So whether it's HOA or a POA, you would click yes. Sometimes there are both, mm -hmm. HOA and POA. You would click yes over there. If it's not a condo, if there are, if it's none, in the fees, you would put zero. You would only leave it blank. So if it's not an HOA, POA, you click the N. In the fees, you click no. Okay? Possession, you always advertise it as uh, closing. Even if your uh, seller wants to rent back, you, when you get the offer, you talk to them about it. Or when you are talk to the agent, when they're submitting an offer, hey, you know what? Please consider this. My seller may need to stay back in the house for extra 10 days after closing. Are your buyers okay with that? All right? A settlement closing is all the same thing. Yeah. Settlement yourself, you know, you got that's it's it's all the same thing. We don't do auctions, right? That's it. Got any questions for me? 
All right, thank you. I'm going to run. I got to get to an appointment. I hope that was helpful.